Praise the Lord. Man, that's awesome. I got three this time. <laughs> hey, let's all, let's all just stand to our feet. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. And how about let's just entertain the presence of the Lord. It's uh, good to have our, our good dear brother back ready to roll in songs. Brother Dickerson, he's finally back in church. Look at him. They rebuilt him pretty good. <laughs> God's been good. Amen. He's going to come lead us in worship. God bless you this morning, brother. Lord everybody Woo. hallelujah won't it be wonderful there Thanksgiving, you know, it's something that you get together, you know, food's always, uh, I'm, I, it's hard because Thanksgiving got too much food, you know, but uh, it, sure, it sure is good while it lasts, but what I noticed this year, honestly, uh, with my family personally, uh, we get together, and I don't know what it is about getting together and, and, and having some food, right? But there's no negativism. There they talk about how good the food is and how beautiful the day is, and they go on and on and on. And then, to me, that's oh, I love that. It's just such good atmosphere, a thankful atmosphere. And and a few stood up and and said how thankful they were. 
And as I was uh, going around that, uh, uh, the day before, you know, getting a couple of things, you know, for my wife and stuff like that, I would ask, well, uh, you, have, you having Thanksgiving? Oh, yes, and uh, we're going to have a good time. And then the next day, I, I just happened to meet some of the same people, and I go, well, how did your Thanksgiving go? Oh, great, it was just so much fun. There was one lady, she had a two-year-old kid, and her dad had hardly ever come to the, any of the family get-togethers. That year, she said her dad comes. She's, I don't know her that, that much. She's in the, in the barber shop where I go. And uh, she said, I couldn't believe it. They were playing with my two-year-old. We were having such a good time. And, and you know, in and, and, and such a positive note, uh, it, it just wanted to make me go, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that that kind of spirit can come just because we we're sitting down having a little bit of dinner, thinking about something positive. I think that's the whole key. And if we start thinking about positive things, and it's hard in this world, we have problems. Come on, everybody has problems. But we have a great, great, great God. Great God. And I, I got to thinking, you know, you get to feeling sorry for yourself. Well, there was a few days I got the feeling sorry for myself. Then I got to thinking about other people that were worse off than me. I said, God, forgive me. How can I come to you with such puny little dinky, stupid stuff that I'm thinking when they're going through multitudes of things and, 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 uh, and hurting? And I begin to thank the Lord and everything else. I don't want to start complaining. There's too many people that are worse off than me. So just remember today, thank him for what you have, because you could be worse off like they are. Praise God. I don't know why I wanted to say that, but it just seems like this has been one of a great Thanksgiving, a positive Thanksgiving, and then that's what we strive for. Praise God. I feel like traveling on. Okay. <laughs> that way this morning. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling on. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. The Lord has been so good to me. I feel like traveling on. Until that blessed home I see, I feel like traveling on. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling on. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. The Lord has been so good to me I feel like 
traveling on until that blessed home I see. I feel like traveling on. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling on. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like I love to try that one more time. Oh, yes, I feel like traveling. Isn't God good this morning? Amen. You get up and have a day like this after a week like this, and you just keep on keeping on. Amen. God is so good this morning. We're going to take our offering up this morning, and uh, I, Sister Amy's got a song for us. Usually it's one I really, really, really like, so we'll see what she's got this morning. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we ask you for the blessing of this offering. We praise you and thank you for this opportunity we have to give. Bless the giver in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you come. Won't you shake somebody's hand and welcome them this morning? Flowers in the field burst forth with blooming. And the wind seems to whisper.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him this morning. God, thank You for that name we call upon this morning. We're so grateful, God, to feel Your presence here in this place today. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says there's going to be a lot of folks calling His name. But that one sentence says, there's something about the way I call his name. He knows me. I said he knows me. He's my heavenly father. He knows how many I got left up here. It going by the wayside, but he's, the number goes down every day. But, but there's just something about the way I say Jesus. <laughs> Demons flee. Diseases flee. Depression walks out the door. And peace that passeth understanding. <laughs> That's the kind of God we're serving this morning. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he a great God today? My, my, my. It's so good to be in the house of God today. And good to see each and every one of you out this morning. Amen. It's uh, good to have my uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law from... Riverside at Brother Wil uh, Wilmus. Good to have y'all this morning. God bless you. And we were we were talking at breakfast this morning about last night I had to go to a celebration from my work and one of the men I worked with for many years had his 40th wedding anniversary and I hadn't seen a lot of them in a long time and I, I, I haven't laughed that hard in so long about all the crazy, crazy things we did when I was younger on the job. I, half of them I didn't remember till they reminded me that was you did that. And then we got to talking about bloopers in the pulpit. <laughs> Some of them is none of your business. <laughs> I said, man, we, we got to get a book out there on that stuff. Because as I say all the time, there ain't nothing like having fun in church. <laughs> Some of the best times I've ever had in my life, regardless of last night's laughing and tears flowing of, of joy, it can't be matched to what happens inside the sanctuary of the Most High God. I've laughed, I've cried, I've hurt, I've prayed and and I have seen my world crash down inside the sanctuary. But in spite of all that, there's still something about that peace and joy of God that just kind of, that's, that's why I can call on His name the way I do. I have a relationship with Him that I used to not have. And I'm glad I have that relationship this morning. If you have your Bibles this morning, or whatever electronic device you got, um, if you turn in your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 18, uh, verses uh, 1, we'll begin at verse 1. I'm going to turn this one on here. I think this is the new one, so let's see if it works here. But While you're finding Jeremiah 18, testing, testing. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Did that get you, Rochelle? Just... <laughs> Amen, amen. Jeremiah 18, we're going to read a few verses here. If you'll just follow along with me this morning. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. There's a lot more to this story reading down. I'm just going to stop here and pluck something from these few verses. Um, but I do hope that this morning god's word would do something to just you know just change one life it may change more but just change one life and let you know that 
everything's going to be okay. <laughs> my, my grandchildren, I don't know where they got that at. They just start doing that now. You like that cereal? Is that chocolate good? I don't know where they, they got it for gramps or what. They're just, everything's thumbs up. So uh, everything's going to be okay, church. <laughs> We're doing good today. I want to preach to you this morning on this subject. Going from marred to good. Going from marred to good. God bless you. you. May be seated. Thank you, Sister Amy. Amen. This reading, a lot of this, if you finish the story up, you've probably heard this in Sunday school, but th th this, this setting to me seems to be the story of my life. <laughs> it just seems to set the tone of, of um, just kind of how I got from where I was to, to here today. Um, but going from marred to good. Jeremiah was told to go down to the potter's house. And there God will give him some words. But he wanted to see what was going on with the potter. And the potter was working with a vessel. And while working with that vessel, the potter realized there was a mar in the vessel, a, a, a spot, a blemish, a problem, a bubble, I, whatever that is. Um, he, he decided that it just was not going to work that way anymore. So the potter chose to just take that clay and turn it into something else. That would be good. My, my wife's family is from back in Ohio. And um, they, they, they make this, uh, th these uh, China things. or Homer Laughlin. You'll see it at Macy's. You'll see it. Uh, Fiesta wear. Got it. Fiesta wear. Well, if you go back there to their family visit, uh, the, the Homer Laughlin plant has been around for oh, who knows how long. A lot of you probably had, had that growing up. Uh, they have a, a store out back, and um, we like to shop there because you can get something for a couple bucks. It costs you 40 bucks at Macy's. <laughs> the problem is when, when you get that plate or that pitcher or whatever that pottery is, it's going to have a blemish on it. That's why it's out back. It's going to have a little white spot, a speck that, Macy's don't approve or J.C. Penney's when they carried it. It's going to have a spot on it. And so they just, they just take those vessels and they just say they're not good enough. We're going to put them out here in the back barn and people that come through town have been doing it for many decades and they'll come through and we'll get a little something out of it. Uh, but it just doesn't meet our standards. I want you to know this morning that whenever I realized that I was a rank sinner, that I had spots on my life, that there came a day that I realized I just wasn't what I should have been. And thank God for the preacher one day that stood at the pulpit and said, you need to do this and change this direction. You need to stop where you're going and, and rearrange your life. And, and for some reason in my life personally, some reason in my life, that, that spot, that blemish, I want to thank God I wasn't put out in that warehouse one day. I, I, want to, I want God to understand, I thank you, God, that when you came, you brought me off the assembly line at birth and, and, and I was born in sin and shaping in iniquity, you chose to put me back on that wheel when I decided I'd had enough of this lifestyle. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're not going to escape the fact that that's how you were born. Psalms 51 and 5, David said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Born in sin, shaped in iniquity. That's who you were. That's who I was. And there, there, there's that marred soul that we need to look at this morning. I am marred at birth. Uh, I, I want to share a word with you that I had to make sure my spell check was right. I said, I ever heard the word malleable? Anybody heard the word malleable? Okay, good. I'm, I know Brother Ronwood because he sells stuff like that. Malleable. I think it's galvanized. They say malleable inside. The word malleable, able to be hammered or pressed. 
permanently out of shape without breaking or cracking. Hmm. I wonder this morning, is anybody malleable? I, I, look, I look at the potter, and I look at that wheel spinning, and he took that old clay of Brother Franklin, Brother Charlie, and I don't know why he would do this to me. But he just took that old clay, and he put me on that wheel, and he started putting pressure on me and started pressing on me, and, 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 and seeing if I was malleable, seeing if I was able to be worked and pressed and pushed and challenged and, and, and driven to a place that I didn't know if I'd have to go someday. And, 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 it, and it was that, that hope that made me malleable, that I didn't break and I didn't crack. And I, I'm telling you, I, I see Zach over there. I, you went a lot farther than I did, but I mean, Anybody been through boot camp, if you're not malleable, you'll be out in the first week. Because <laughs> they, will, they will mess with your mind. They, they, they will get a hold of you, and their whole plan is to see if you can, you can handle pressure. And you can handle the stress of being in battle and, and deal with the problems that will, will come. And so boot camp, when you look at it on the face, it's like, duh, you're going to show me how to shoot a gun and do things and but that's not what you're there for. They'll show you that later. They want to see if you can handle the craziest things. Marched out of my barrack one day, and, and I think I told this before about how to sew up my fatigue pants. And I, I had a moment, so why would I want to learn how to sew? They gave you a little sewing kit, probably got a TGNY back then. And they give you your fatigues. They're about five sizes too big and about 10 feet too long. And they tell you by tomorrow morning, those seams need to be at the second hole of your chuck of boots. Well, good luck with that. And so I sewed until about four in the morning until I finally got, I'd rip and sew, rip and sew. I didn't know how to do that stuff. And then I got them just, I'd stand up and I'd, I'd sew some stitches in and pull in the insides there to get those fatigue pants just right. And then I'd look down there, and it's okay. If I pull it up above my belly just a little bit, it'll get to that second hole. The next morning, I walk out just proud. Man, I got them pants just right. And I walk out of the front door of the old barracks there in San Antonio, and this drill sergeant comes up spitting in my face. I'm, I'm not teasing, he's just spitting. Just spittles coming right out of his face, just screaming and mad. All right. What's wrong with your seams, boy? I can't look down because I'm out of tension. I said, sir, I don't know. He said, they're at the third islet. Folks, I don't know if you know the difference between two islets or the other, but that's about an eighth inch too long. I spent about eight hours sewing those things, and I almost broke out in tears. And he said, rip it out. Ripped it out. He wrote me up a, a, a chit. They sent me to the kitchen that night for about six hours. But then he wrote me a second one up. As I started to walk away, he dismissed me. He let me go about five feet away. He said, soldier, hold it right there. I stopped. He said, how come your seams aren't sewed up? Now, I know the answer, Brother Jim, I want to give, but that would probably be a, a poke in the jaw. I said, sir, because I'm stupid. And he wrote me up another one for the second night in the kitchen. This went on for weeks, folks. The pressure, the push, the drive, the, the, the taunting, the harassing, and the wondering, what am I even doing here? I asked to come here. I'm going I'm to share something with you that you probably most already know. When you make a decision to serve God, and, and, and you come to an altar of repentance. And that day happens when you say, I've had enough of this world. And I'm going to march into the house of God and hear the preacher tell me about the plan of salvation and, and repentance and baptism. In fear of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give the utterance. And you make your first move and you get saved and, and God does something miraculous for, for you. And you toss them drugs out the window or you toss them sticks out the window and you, and you pour that bottle down the drain. And you think everything's going to be okay. Just 
buckle your seatbelt. Because the enemy's going to see if you're malleable. The enemy's going to see if I can put pressure on him and, and see if I can crack him a little bit and see if I can wear him out a little bit and say that Jesus isn't what he should be. I'm talking about how you go from marred to good. And it's a journey, church. Uh, it's a happy journey. When, when, you, when you look at the, the stress and the trial and the heartache you go through and, 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 and you know, I'm just going to make it real, life, right? When you look at the, the life that you deal with, I, I, I don't know what's different now than back before I met Jesus, but I can tell you what made a difference in me going from marred to good was on that day I said, okay, God, it's me and you, and I'm not turning back. I didn't know if I was all that malleable, to be honest or not. I, I really didn't know if what was going to happen next, but I, I can tell you that it's been 41 years. And there's been highs and lows in life. There's been ups and downs. And I mean, that, that pressure just comes on me sometimes. And I, I just step back and I say, God, it's me and you, right? Just like January 7th, 1977. It's, it's, it, it just comes and comes and comes and comes and comes and the next day I wake up I say praise God the peace of God why can we cry when we're happy because the peace and joy of the Lord is something remarkable I, I wished I had the articulation to explain how that works all I can tell you is when I do call out the name of Jesus everything just lines out i got problems, but it just kind of makes all the sense in the world. Proverbs 29 and 1. He that, being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. <coughs> I don't want to do that. I don't like that preaching. I don't sound right. I don't like that rule or that, that process. Let me tell you something about change. <clears throat> change is difficult change is challenging but change is necessary let me tell you it's wonderful to change it's, it, change is difficult, it's challenging it's necessary one, one boss of mine years ago told me I just, didn't, I just didn't believe in what he wanted to do he came out with this new process we're going to do maintenance this way I, I, I've always done it this way Brother McGee so you ain't changing me. This has worked for me for many years. So this is the way it's going to be with me. And he, he was polite enough, and he'd come in my office and, well, you know, you need to get involved in this. You need to start using this software or start following this process. You like that word process? This new system. And I just kick my feet every day because it just rubbed me wrong. I did not like it a bit. He finally came in my office one day. He said, Franklin, if you just got two minutes. I said, yes, sir, I do. He came in. He said, well, I'm, I'm just going to ask you one more time. And this is, maybe you'll get the message. He said, this is a steamroller. You either get out from under it or get on top of it. But one way or another, we're going through this process, and there's nothing you can do. I got the message, I was probably going to lose my job. So I decided this is a really good process. I like this. I didn't like it 100%, but fast forward five years later, I became a global advisor telling people around the world how nice this process was. And traveled all over the world. you got to follow this. It's really nice. It's really neat. Everybody said, what happened to you? You drink the Kool-Aid? No, I, I was kind of pushed to change. And I realized it's actually pretty good. I don't know if anybody's online this morning or anybody's here this morning. May I submit to you, I was probably the only one that fought God. I was the only one that liked being marred. I was probably the only one that enjoyed that world out there. I, I was probably the only one that said, those, those Christian folks in that church jumping around is crazy. 
Because that ain't the way I do it. That ain't what makes me happy. Until one day I, I saw someone else that showed up and just, what happened to you? Man, you got to go to Man, you got to go to church. I mean, I was raised in church, but you know how that goes. I never bought into it. I'm here to tell you that once you experience this, huh? Once you experience this, you will be a change agent for life. Once you make a decision that being marred isn't the best way you want to be, once you decide that, that what's going on in your life isn't really getting you anywhere and you're marking time and it's really just the definition of insanity. You're not getting anywhere and nothing's happening in your life. But when, when you decide that being marred isn't what I want to do and that it might be a steamroller, I might as well just get on board, just see what this is about. And when you taste, come, come taste of this. Come get a taste of the Holy Ghost. Come get a taste of this God I serve. How many of you have told somebody that outside these walls, you need to come experience this and see that whatever you're doing out there, you don't think you need to change. Look what happened to me. I used to be this way and that way. And that one day that I finally came to an altar of repentance, God finally took me from being marred to good because he put me on that wheel one more time. I didn't deserve that opportunity. He should have put me in the back lot. But he put me on the wheel and said, all right, now if you'll be a little malleable, if you'll just relax and chill out a little bit and be willing to change a little bit, we're going to have something good going on here. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's what God's trying to do to us today, people. This is exactly what he's trying to do to us today. He said, you will be a new creature. Old things, that old piece of clay on that wheel, you, you've got problems, you've got issues, but why don't you just let me? I'm not going to make you. Why don't you let me just put my hands on you and begin to mold you into something and begin to change you into something that you will now not just be marred, you now will have will not have the heartache anymore or the issues that you don't have me to deal with. I mean... I had problems before I met God. I got problems today. As I said, the, the difference is I got Jesus. And way over in the dark, at the, the deepest parts of my life, I just get in that room and I say, Jesus, you know, this is hard. And here comes that malleability again, just pressing and pressing, and life is pushing. I want somebody to know today, if you're going through these kinds of things and you're having all this trouble and you're thinking, I don't know how much more I can take. Hey, listen, if you've got Jesus, you'd be shocked how much more you take if you'll let him mold you on that wheel just a little bit more and work you just a little bit. What does good look like? I think sometimes that's the challenge. We may not know what good looks like. This world tells us that good looks like a new car. That good looks like a lot of money in the bank. That, that good is, is a new home. That, that good is all the best clothes and, and the best accessories. That, 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 you know, I just go on and on. Good, good's all this stuff. And, and is, is that not true that today's probably the worst in my life it's ever been? It's all about what you got. Everybody says, oh, you don't have a new home. What's, what's wrong with you? The, the world is telling us that's what good looks like. But I'm going to tell you what good looks like. Good looks like the, the, good looks like the three Hebrew children that didn't bend, they didn't bow, they didn't burn. Now, the world says, that's kind of weird. They went through all that. They could have just bowed and everything been okay. Well, that's not what good looks like serving God. Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel went through all the fasting, all the prayer, doing everything he was told to do. Has anybody ever done anything that they thought they needed to do and things just fell apart? It's probably just me. Just get everything you could do. Sweep the floors. Clean the toilets. Hang lights in the family center. <laughs> do everything. And the next day just falls apart. Let me tell you what good looks like. I didn't give you this in the back, so don't put it up there. I didn't want to do that because 
If we read it too much, we won't hear this. Let me tell you what good really looks like, church. Don't let the world convince you you need more stuff to be good. Don't let them tell you you need to be more articulate or speak this way or act this way. Let me tell you what good looks like in Hebrews. Now, you, you've heard this, but you just hang with me just a little bit. Good is by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. He did it right. He did it good. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. And by it he being dead yet speaketh. He spoke from the grave. That's what good looks like. He was murdered. The world would say, what's wrong with that? There's something weird about that picture. I'm telling you, that's what good looks like. He offered a more excellent sacrifice by faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. This testimony. Oh, my. I, I, I'm sorry that I say this, but that he pleased God. I don't know if I can say that today, church. But Enoch... He pleased God enough that he took him from his grandkids. He took him from his family. He took him from his home, whatever farms and oxen and sheep and camels he had, and just took him home with him. The world says, that's weird. There's so much he's got going on. Let me tell you what good is. Good is by faith Noah being warned of, of God, of things not seen yet, moved to fear, prepared an ark, saving his house. Look what... He went through. Look at the harassment he went through. I was talking about one of the jokes last night that used to tease me. Everybody knew me at work, knew my plan of salvation. They, they knew that uh, I jump and I run and I shout and I speak in tongues as a spirit of God gives me the utterance. I am not a bit ashamed of that. I never have been and never will I be. I just let the devil know that right now. You didn't have to hear that. I want him to know that. And there was, a, there was an intern from over in Asia. They came to be with us, and we, we took him around and showed him what heavy oil was about. And um, he just you know, he didn't speak good English at all. But we showed him. He was here for about a month. And he came in the room one morning to say goodbye. And all of us were in there. And... Uh, Moses, I don't know if you're online. I know you're at the church across town, but if you are, I'm telling the story. So Moses was in the room, and he grew up out here in Lamont, the labor camps. And, and so the fellow, the engineer, came in. He said goodbye. He said quite a few words. He probably talked about seven or eight minutes. And um, real nice uh, fellow. And he, he, uh, he got done. He said goodbye and shook hands. He walked out the door. And Moses jumped up. He said, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Everybody sit down, sit down. He runs over and he shuts the door. And he goes back, sit down. He goes, I have no idea what that man just said. But Franklin's the only one who can speak in tongues. Could you interpret that for us? <laughs> He's serious. He thought that's how it works. <laughs> now, that don't bother me, folks. I, I just, you know. It's back in my mind. I was wondering, was he teasing or serious? You know, but they knew me. It, it was okay. I, I had no problem with that. I'm saying that for this. You know, when, when, when Noah went to build the ark, don't you know he got harassed? Don't you know he got tested to see if he's malleable? And the world would say, stop building that thing. It ain't rained in how many years? And it's the craziest thing you ever did. That's what good looks like to the world. But I'll tell you what good looks like. Noah builds the ark and he saves humanity. You're here today because he knew what good looked like. He followed God's plan. And so often we are, we are attacked at every juncture today in our life. It used to be it was stressful as a teenager. You know, in, in the world, you're What? But today, adults, us people with a different color hair, I mean, it's, just, it's, it's going, it's leaving, it's, it's bypassing me. And, you know, we're being challenged that good is going into retirement with three motor homes and not being able to pay for them. Who, 
Who says that's good? I'll tell you what good is. By faith, Abraham, he decided when he was tried and he offered up Isaac, and he, he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. He decided one day because God told him, go sacrifice the only thing that you wanted and I gave you. And he climbed up the mountain to do it. What good looks like is that he followed through with God's plan and he was being pressed. Don't you know his mind just got tweaked all the way up that mountain even though he was following God's rule. But he just knew. How many can say this? He just knew that God was going to make a way where there seemeth no way. God will make a way. I can't tell you, I, man, if we had the time, I know this was the old days, but I'd just start passing the mic around and let, let you start telling about how I'd just give you one shot at it if I ever did it because you'd talk too long because that's how we are. But when was one time God made a way with a seameth wooden uh, way? Yeah. And, man, that's where we could write that book. Well, he healed me. He blessed me. He gave me this job that everybody said I couldn't get. He, 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 he provided finances where, you know, it just, and, and Abraham's going up the mountain to sacrifice his son. What good looks like is he probably came down about an inch away from his son when the angel stopped him. That's what good looks like. So often today we're being told and pressed and pushed upon. That's not good. That would scare me. I'm not telling you I go into it without a little nerves. What good looks like is by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. And Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction of the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. There it is right in a nutshell. You can't have fun down here. It's for a season. I have chosen that this life is but a vapor. And it will go away real quickly. And every day it's getting faster and faster. And I'm beginning to realize that decision I made in January 7th, 1977 was the best decision I made to go from being marred to good. When he put me back on that wheel that day and said, Listen, Franklin, you're going the wrong way. But if you'll just give me a chance, I'll, I'll work you. And I'll get that bad. You just let me push you and press you just a little bit. I'll get all that bad stuff out of you. By faith. All this by faith. All this by faith. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder, tempted. Sometimes I feel like I'm being sawn in half, Bishop. I, there are just days I feel like just I, that. They got the magician, and they're just cutting right through that box. But this is real sometimes. But we have no idea. We have no idea. Brother, Brother Dickerson, you must have got my email. Because I'm going to close with how you finished up this morning. We have no idea what they went through. Cruel mockings, scourgings, bonds, imprisonment. These all, having obtained a good report through faith. Just through faith, that's all. They obtained a good report through faith. They were malleable. The Bible says they never received that promise. They just kept getting pushed and pressed. And sometimes, Brother D, I do, I read that and I look at it and I said, How in the world can I complain? How in the world can I sit in my home on the stool and do nothing? Woe is me. When I'm living life and I'm living it good and I'm sitting there in my office last night. I'm sitting there saying, God, I just began to cry. I pulled up a picture of my daughters and I said, yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> I said, God, this is real. Huh. I probably sit there for 10 minutes and stared at it and just talked to God. I thanked him for taking me back in 1977 from being marred to good. Well, well because if, if my wife hadn't pushed me, 
and pressured me, she'd already run me off. And I said, I kind of like that lady. God says, you can't have her. She's one of my children. She don't want nothing to do with you. you. Can we use this now anymore, preacher? Richard, can I use this now? Unequally yoked. Is that a term we can use still today? Is that good? That's what she told me. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what good is. I'm looking at all of you today. I'm looking at you folks today. You know what good is because this is, we say it all the time, this is the green berets of the church. You're here early <laughs> Sunday morning. You, you're just out there just doing what you always do. Why? Because you know what good looks like. That's why you're here. Please don't disparage what, take that somewhere you, you're thinking it. That's not what I'm saying. You know what good is because you've been sitting there when God, God just was pushing and pressing. And the enemy was at your back. And you went to church and you took that tithing envelope and you had about $2 left. No way to put money in the gas tank. No way to buy macaroni and cheese boxes, Brother Smith. <laughs> I think when we get to heaven, brother, we're going to have macaroni and cheese up there. That's our favorite meal. Folks, I can't be any more serious than I am right now. You know what good looks like because you've been through it. You have been malleable. You've been tested. You knew what it was like to be marred. And you're over here living in good. And I want you to know this morning that when you see what you're going through, I'm telling you, Brother Dickerson, I'll show you, I'll show you my notes. I'm going to try and rearrange it because it sounds like you're talking again. When you look at what you're going through, this might be the message of today because we're in sync. There's no need to complain. The song says, I got a right. I got a right to complain uh, to the world standard because they don't know what good is. I'm standing here in the sanctuary of the Most High. I'm in amongst, I hope to be friends. <laughs> I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost here. I, I, I feel like God is, is working in someone's mind this morning because you're stressed, you're overwhelmed. You've got things going on. You wonder what, what is happening. I, I'm going to read you the words of that song because I don't sing. Let us stand this morning. It says, I've had my bad days. <laughs> I've had hills to climb. I've had sad days. Mm. And often a weary mind. But when I look around and I think these things all out, all of the good days outweigh the bad days. I can't complain. <laughs> the devil wants you to think this morning, you don't know what I'm going through. Just don't, there's no need to complain about it. Sometimes the clouds hang low. And I'd like to see them go. There are storms come through my life. I think, God, it's been around like last year's rainy season. Is there any way this can move on? <laughs> Please. Then I question, Lord, why so much pain? I've done that in the hospital. Just laying on the floor. Just bawling my eyes out like a baby. God, why? But during that time... The whole time I was going through that, I said, God, without you, I couldn't be here. Without you, I could be nothing. He knows what's best for me. Does he? The world says you don't know what good is. He knows what's best for me, though I cannot see. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I can't complain. Are you feeling this morning like God is going to do something for you in a special way? Just, it only has to be one, you know. I, I, we, the, the, the world is going through so much turmoil right now. I can tell you there are saints sitting home thinking, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to stay on that potter's wheel and just let him keep on turning me and turning me and get that little bubble out and get that bad spot out. Work that crack just a little bit more. Work that smudge just a little bit more. Work, just, hey, does anybody want God to do that for them? Or have you already got there? You already arrived? You don't need it? <laughs> I need him so much more today than I've ever needed him. I want to stay away from Mard and live right here where it's good this morning can we pray father i thank you this morning god for your wonderful word the message god i may not have delivered it in the way i'd wanted to but your message can't be changed you are working our souls you're working our lives you're dealing with our spirit you're you're touching our families you're you're stopping diseases. You're healing things. You're providing things in ways we could not ever had imagined had we not moved from being marred and letting you get us to good. But God, we want to maintain and maintain with all of our heart that desire we had that first day that I'm going to keep on pressing and keep pushing no matter how difficult the battle, God. And we will just say today, God... No matter what we go through, we cannot complain, for we are blessed above all. I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Let's, let's take just a few minutes break. And, you know, it'd be awesome if at a quarter till, people got jobs they got to do, but at a quarter till, all they can get in here. And let's just, let's just pull the spirit into this place that God will change lives forever. Can we do that? God bless you as you go.